Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode on David Show. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was made by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. So a little backstory, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird met in, I believe, 1983 because they had a similar kind of drawing style and they began collaborating under the name Mirage Studios, which it's a mirage because they were just doing it in a living room. One night, Peter Laird draws a Ninja Turtle holding an nunchuck. Yeah, and it looks very corny if you look at the original drawings. They decided to do something with the idea. In May of 1984, they released their first issue of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This stuff gained success to the point where they got a lot of people asking them, hey, wanna license these to us? And turns out they do a TV show and all that blah 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 and yeah. Ninja Turtles are now mainstream, basically. Except the horrible, all of the horrible movies. I'm gonna give you a plot breakdown of the first issue, which is, we are introduced to the Turtles uh, when they're fighting uh, the Purple Dragon Gang and they fend them off very easily and kill them all. They then go to the sewers where they live and Splinter reveals to them, aha, Splinter reveals to them his origin story. So, Splinter and his master Hamada Yoshi, well, they're in Japan and uh, Hamada Yoshi is in the Foot Clan and he's a very successful ninja. Splinter copies his moves and somehow learns it because comic logic. <laughs> Orokunagi is a enemy of his and they are like fighting for a lover and she's called Tang Chen and only likes Hamata Yoshi. After Orokunagi discovers this, he tries to kill her, but Hamata Yoshi stops him and kills him. Uh, this makes him dishonorable and he decides to move to New York. Then Orokusagi, he's uh, Orokunagi's nephew, I believe. He, well, does ninjutsu too and it's very fucking good, very early on. He has decided to be the leader of the Foot Clan in the New York. Uh, he starts doing illegal business like drug smuggling and assassination and all kinds of shit and goes under the name of the Shredder, which, yeah, it's kind of edgy, but <laughs> it's 1984, man. Hamato Yoshi and Tang Shen seem to be living happily until one day, Hamato Yoshi walks home and Tang Shen is dead. Shredder re reveals himself and kills Hamato Yoshi as well, and Splinter goes on a venture and lives in the sewer. One day, a blind man is passing a street, and a truck is almost dri driving on him. When a young man decides to jump and save him, and because of the car stops, some ooze falls out of it. This ooze hits a boy who is holding a ball of turtles, then, along with the ooze, fall into the sewer, and they're crawling in it, and Splinter picks them up and saves them. So, the next day, they discover, or he discovers Splinter because he's a smart one. He's smarter, and uh, he doubled in size. Later on, the turtles start walking and talking, and Splinter teaches them each a weapon in ninjutsu and gives them the name Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo. Then, Splinter tells them, hey, I want you to kill Orokusaki. So, Raphael goes to send him a message to a duel of death, and they meet the next night on a rooftop, and the Ninja Turtles battle in an epic battle, the Foot Clan, and then they battle Shredder and almost get beat until Leonardo stabs him, and he's like, yeah, go ahead, kill me off. And they're like, no, we want you to commit suicide to get your honor back. He's like, no. Tries to throw a grenade, Donatello takes a staff and knocks him out of the roof, blowing him up, and the end. The turtles live happily forever after. Yeah, so I'm gonna give a few recommendations for you, my fans. Uh, if you want to read this original run of the Ninja Turtles, there's this IDW Publishing, they released the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Ultimate Collection. This is a nice one, uh, and there are a couple volumes. I have the first one, which covers issue one through seven, and has annotations and extras, and a Raphael micro series. So I highly recommend getting this. It's not that expensive. It's definitely worth it if you want to read the original run on high quality paper. And it's hardcover, so it's kind of safe. And for a cheaper alternative, there's a link in the description down below where you can go read the entire collection on your device. But yeah, I'm going to talk about the art style of the book. Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, they were very much inspired by Jack Kirby and what was the name of the other guy again? Mark, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 now I remember his name. They were inspired by Frank Miller and Jack Kirby. So they did a lot of splash pages and the art style is black and white, which I really do like, but you can get a colored edition of this. It just doesn't have the same flavor, you know? Anyway, it has a very crude style, kind of. The turtles look very crude and there's a lot of blood and it's brutal art, man. These original comics are so brutal. Like the turtles go to a bar in one of those issues and, hey, can I have a beer? 
So they're like alcoholics and everything. So the original Ninja Turtles are actually kind of brutal and you know weird. There's a lot of weird shit in these original books. It's kind of fun reading these and seeing the art. So yeah, I'll give the original Ninja Turtles. I'll give it a fair 7.5 out of 10. That said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do feel free to give it a like, subscribe, and comment down below. And I'm David, and I'll see you in another episode on David's show. Yeah.